was a wonderful little boy chick. He would follow me around everywhere like a little lost puppy, always trying to hump my leg, you know? So he'd express his affection physically as a child? Oh, yeah. He was very proud of his little schmeckel when it popped up. Sometimes I would have to slap it on the end and say, get back in your house, little mouse. <laughs> and he would cry. And Jacob and I would laugh. Uh, Jacob is your husband? Yeah. So that's also what we would call Siggy Zwinky. You named your son's penis after his father? Yeah. <laughs> we thought it was most amusing. And was Siggy comfortable with that? Occasionally, he would get upset and hit the thing until it went black and blue. So, to cheer him up, I would get one of his father's cigars and put it between my legs <laughs> and wander around, flicking it and shouting, Look at my schmeckel! Look at my big Jakob schmeckel! I am your father now! <laughs> but also, I'm still your mother. I didn't want him to get confused. Goodness. But then Jakob would come in and he would get that look in his eye and... We would usually end up stumping right there in the living room in front of the children. How would Sigmund react to seeing this? Not well, no. No, because it can be quite distressing for a child to be confronted by their parents' sexuality. Please, don't question my smothering. 